All right, so we'll kind of play this by ear, this next little segment here before I let you guys go home today. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm using a laptop-based scope, I'm just using the Pico, and, and primarily because the way that I'm projected here and the smart board, I, I normally would have the Varus behind me and use that, but with the smart board having some issues, we're, we're not gonna do it that way. I'm just using this one. Oh, you know what we need to do first before we hook up to this car? I need you to refer back to your book for a second and I need to show you a coil design that we're about to look at. This is a three wire one. And this is a little bit different than what we've been talking about. Um, this is basically our setup. This is a, on a 2007 Honda. All right, so how many, how many wires are we seeing right there? Three. We're seeing three, right? All right, so this is a three wire coil design. That's the picture that I have here. All the stuff that we've been drawing so far this morning, what we were talking about is the driver, the control, the module, the coil, and um, this being a three wire, so there's one wire there, this would be the second wire here, and then the third wire would be here. This is every single three pin coil on plug design is essentially this setup. You got one common feed, one main feed, right, that powers up the coil. And then uh, that's, this would be coil positive. Coil negative is actually inside of the coil itself. So the only section of coil negative is from there to there. So we have a difference in this one. When we do control circuit testing, can't use a test light. Because what have we been doing so far? We've been connecting the test light to coil negative connected to ground and looking for the flicker of the test light. Why can't I do that here? Because where's coil negative? It's inside of the coil itself. Where's the transistor that controls the coil? It's inside the coil itself, okay? So when it comes to coil on plug designs, there's really three different designs. This being one of them, this picture, and this is the, the car we're gonna demo here is this design. There is a four wire design that I'll just add an extra wire here to the engine computer and I'll, I'll put that as um, the IGF circuit that I mentioned to you guys earlier, ignition confirmation, and they're not all called that, but when you see a four wire design, there's some type of confirmation signal that's used for diagnostics. So the fourth wire on a four wire design, for the most part, is for diagnostics, okay? Or, <laughs> learned this on a Volkswagen or an Audi, the secondary winding it can be done like this. Now, I'm not drawing the secondary in here, but um, or on the page, but I just drew it on here. This would be a four wire design that I've seen on Audi and Volkswagen. This would be your secondary. This is where a spark comes from. And so the fourth wire would be one, two, three, and four. So you actually have two separate grounds. You see wire two is a ground for what? For the primary winding. And do you see what the extra ground here is for? It's for the secondary winding. Remember I told you guys it can work that way. It's a return path. I've seen them like that on Volkswagen and Audi. So the, the four wire coil, the fourth wire is what? A four wire coil on plug or a four wire ignition coil the fourth wire is either a ground for the secondary, like I'm showing in this picture, or it is number four, I'll draw in this picture, some type of diagnostics signal. A four wire coil on plug ignition coil, the fourth wire is either a ground for the secondary, as you can see as I drew here in red. I have a ground, that's my fourth pin, or that fourth pin I drew a number four up here too, is some type of diagnostic signal to the engine computer. Okay, um, we don't need to get lost in that, but it is beneficial to know that information when you're about to do some testing on a coil itself, okay? As far as the diagnostic side of things go, where they'll tie that into is they'll tie it into coil negative. That's coil negative right there that I just circled. 
So coil negative, that's the side that's pulsing on and off. That's the side when the circuit's off, we'll read 12 volts. And, and when the circuit's turned on, we read zero volts. So they'll put in some type of diagnostic signal here that is gonna be, that's that IGF. And I'm using IGF because that is a, a Nissan. This one doesn't have it, but that's a Nissan. I think that's Nissan. Maybe that's, that's Toyota I'm thinking of, Toyota. IGT is ignition timing. IGF is ignition confirmation. So that is a Toyota specific term, but they will connect something in the coil negative side that is a confirmation. So when that signal turns on, turns off, it'll create a voltage signal, sends it back to the computer that says, we have ignition that took place. It's for diagnostics, okay? When we're looking for ignition control, Again, coil negative being inside of the computer or inside of the coil itself because the transistor is inside the coil. We can't see it with the test light because it would be that section right there. In fact, can't see it with a lab scope either. This waveform right here, this waveform in blue, can I see that waveform on this design? And the answer is no. Can't see it with my scope. Can't see it with a test light. Why? Can't get to it. What does this side read all the time? Where does it go? So it's a ground. If I connect my scope to that wire, what am I going to see on my lab scope? A flat line, zero volts all the time. Okay? If I connect my scope to this wire with my voltmeter, voltage trace, what am I going to see? There's my screen. This is a fuse. That's my supply voltage coming in. It will be a flat line battery voltage if the car is running 14 volts roughly. No waveform. So no waveform there on the feed, no waveform there on the ground. This timing signal that controls the base of the transistor, I can see that one. I can see control there, but I can't see coil negative control. Am I being clear with you guys? Coil negative control, this circuit right here, I can't see the on off of that with a voltage trace, with a voltage waveform. I can see the transistor being turned on and off and here's the waveform, this is what we're about to recreate for you guys. I can see the square wave, I can see the ramp, current flow, cannot see this waveform, this blue <coughs> voltage, primary voltage waveform. It's not a problem, it's just a characteristic. We're gonna recreate this picture. We're gonna talk about this picture too, but one more thing I wanna build on first. This is a three wire coil. I drew the four wire coil. What's a two wire coil look like? A two wire ignition coil, you'd have power, you'd have the coil. Where's the transistor? Either in the ECM or older designs, it would be in an ignition module. We'll, we'll do today's cars, the two wire coils on today's cars. The driver is in the engine computer. So the transistor would be sitting inside of the engine computer. I'll draw it kind of sideways here, right? It'd be grounded there and then my base control would be internal to the computer. So can I see on the two wire design, can I see this base circuit signal? Because it's in here, it's in the board and the answer is no. But can I see coil negative? There's coil positive, coil negative, this is coil negative, coil positive. Can I see coil negative on the two wire design? Yes, I can. Can I see coil negative on any distributor type ignition system? Yes, I can. Can I see coil negative uh, on the three or four wire design where the transistor's inside of the coil? The answer is no, I cannot. But can I still view coil primary current the answer is yes, because remember, what comes in's gotta come out. So can I put an amp clamp on the feed here, or an amp clamp on the ground here, and see the primary current ramp? The answer is yes. When does current flow occur? Would be when we turn the base of this transistor on, Small trace, once that happens, it completes the circuit and allows current flow through. When we take this base voltage away, we stop current flow up there. And so if you look at the pattern, what do we see? See the red trace, that's the base circuit, turning that on. At the same time, we have current flow that begins 
And we see that red square wave, when that turns off, what does current flow do? Current flow stops. So that red trace is controlling the transistor for the coil. There's your coil ramp. Can we see the coil primary ramp? Yes, we can. Questions? I'm gonna duplicate this on this car for you guys. So I wanna duplicate this picture on this scope. I'll start with just a 20 volt scale for my first setting, that's channel A. This is a four channel scope. It's just like the Varus that you guys have been using. It's just a little bit different of a setup. Um, it is called uh, a Pico scope. Um, and uh, it has BNC adapters instead of the banana style that has the Varus has. Um, no different, the power is on the outside, the ground's in the middle, and uh, it's a four channel scope. So my voltage trace will be this one. I'll do current on channel B. I'll turn that guy on. I'm gonna change my probe here. Tell it what I'm using. I'm using a 60 amp current clamp in the 20 amp mode, and it's an ignition coil. So on average, 10 amps of current on a coil. Some of this will come with time for you guys as far as what to, what to set. And then I can adjust my scales over here. And as far as which wire, it doesn't really matter to begin with. Uh, one of the things that we can do looking at coils, if you want to determine wiring without, without guessing, you can, look at, you can look at the other coils. See if I can show you guys this. So I see a, a red with a white, a black, and then looks like some kind of bluish. On this one, I see that same red with a white on the right, a black in the middle, and then a black and red. So the two wires here, the two wires here are the same. Which wires are those? Let's go to this picture. Of those three wires, I have two that are the same for two different coils. What do they have to be? Power and the ground. It has to be the power and ground. So which wire would be my signal wire to control the coil? The wire that's different between the coils. Make sense? It's got to be the one all the way to the left. We can prove that. Ignore the red trace, just look at the blue. I'm just gonna go down the line. I'll start with the one to the right. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be my power feed. We got some weird, weird looking stuff going on in there. This is, welcome to the world of scopes. This is on a one millisecond time, sorry, a 50 millisecond time base. We're gonna raise this up. We're gonna go to a one second screen. And what are these spikes here? Let me turn this channel off for a second. Is this a problem or is this just the collapse of the ignition coils providing some back feed on this power feed circuit? So uh, when you're new to scope usage, you'd look at that and say, man, there's a problem there. I'm actually looking at that, I'll pause it right there. I'm looking at that and I can see all four cylinders firing here. It's not really noise, it's actually there. Um, it's not a problem. Uh, this is the first time you've maybe seen something like this. If you look close at this, it's actually pretty cool. You can see, I'm gonna zoom in on this, you can see an inverted coil current ramp pattern. You see it? Uh, that's normal, it should be there. This would be that coil firing that I'm connected to, and this would be the same coil firing again way over here. Why is the spike so much bigger? Because that's the coil I'm connected to, and that magnetic field's a lot stronger right there. What are these other ones? Remember, they all share the same power feed. So we can actually see the other cylinders firing in here. Very useful pattern uh, to synchronize all, in different scenarios. Uh, just a side, a side note there. So we have this electrical noise. Is that a problem? No, it is not. What can I do to get rid of it? Every scope has some type of filtering. So I just kind of filtered that out for you. What wire is that? That's my main power wire, okay? That's the main feed coming in. We'll turn that filtering back off. I'll leave it there. 
All right, so that's my feed. Then this wire, I might see the same thing on the ground. The black wire, I'm sure, is my ground. See the same electrical noise that's on the ground side of the circuit. Again, we can filter that. Everybody okay with those small ripples in there? I am too. All right, third wire. We'll leave the filter on. What do we got? Nice small square wave. That's the turn on and turn off of the ignition coil. There's a lot of stuff we can do with a scope. I don't know how much you guys have have uh, learned about it. I'm setting a trigger here so our eyes can uh, look at that a little bit easier. And we'll drop this time base down. We don't, we don't need that much. Why is that not triggering right? It's weird that that's doing that. This, um, are, are you guys aware of trigger settings at all? Do you know any of that with this lab scope? See, I don't want to do that right now. I'll, I'll just say this because there are, there are some that will be watching this that know what it is. The reason I was having a trigger issue is I had, I had my filter set, but the scope still sees those spikes. And at times it's, trigger, it's triggering off of a spike. When I turn my filter off, you'll see it. And so to make that more stabilized, I really need to, I need to um, maybe adjust my ground location. Uh, I don't want to get lost on that right now. We'll do trigger and all that maybe another time with this class. I want to focus on this ignition system. And so I think for argument purposes right now, we just won't set a trigger at all. It's not important. You can see this, you see the square wave. That's the coil turn on, turn off signal, okay? All three wires will be see steady voltage on one, steady ground on the other, and then that signal. Um, the amperage, remember we can go on the power or the ground. Just gonna turn this on in a 20 amp mode. I'll turn this channel back on so you guys can see it. This is gonna be timed with this. I'll just go on the feed wire because it's easiest. As far as amp clamps go, there's a uh, current flow, there's an arrow on this, and the arrow is pointing this way. The arrow indicates direction of current flow conventional theory. So power feed wire would be power arrow pointing toward the coil. That's the way I want to set this up. You gotta make sure that the jaws of the clamp are all the way around. You never wanna have the jaws of the clamp like that. You will not get good pictures. You can see kind of what it did to my waveform. I don't know if it messed it up or not. You want the jaws of that, oh yeah, huge difference in current. The other thing you don't wanna do when you're using amp clamps, we don't want this clamp laying on top of another coil. So I wouldn't want it over here and lay in that way because we're gonna get a lot of noise. So we kinda of wanna move it away from the coil as much as we can and still grab that signal. And that will make sure that you get a decent waveform. What am I doing wrong? My amperage is too low. I'm not really doing anything wrong. I just wanna adjust my scale so I can see it better. We can filter this guy a little bit too, but I'll just pause it and we'll look at one, one pattern. What do we see? I mean, the characteristics are a little bit different as far as what I have in my text because that was an 07 Honda and this is a, I don't know what year this Nissan is. It doesn't matter, but do you see the, let's turn this filtering off. See the, you see where filtering can be a little bit misleading too when you're really zoomed in? And what I wanted to do was pull in cursors and show you like where this square wave turns on is where the red trace begins. But with the filtering there, it's kind of tough to pick that out. And now it's, it's lined up pretty well, right? As soon as we turn the base of that transistor on, what's turning the transistor on? The blue square wave is. What's the red trace? That's the current flow through the primary. 
When does the uh, spark occur? The spark occurs when we turn it off, right? So when the blue square wave turns off, that's where the current flow ends. That's where spark begins. 4.3 milliseconds. I told you guys on average about five milliseconds as far as coil control goes. So if I have a car that's misfiring, uh, this gentleman right here, what's your name? Lino. What is it? Leno. Leno uh, has a, a BMW. We were talking about it, about uh, potentially maybe having an ignition problem. And if I have a misfire, this is something I'm gonna wanna do. I wanna see what my coil current ramps look like. I wanna see what the control looks like. Um, we can also uh, swap coils and see if they move. There's the practical side of things. But what if the coil lives underneath the intake manifold? If the coil lives underneath the intake manifold, you're not going to unbolt the manifold to swap coils around, right? So the swapping coils around might not be a great test. On this Nissan, it's real easy to swap coils, no problem. If that coil is misfiring, I can swap it to another one and see if it moves with the coil, okay? Now it's nice that we're using a demo vehicle because I'm about to do something that I could hurt things. and I'm okay with that, it's not my car. Here's what I wanna do. Um, I told you guys we can't use test lights because we can't get to coil negative. Everybody comfortable with that? Can I use my test light though on, on this blue trace? kind of signal is this this is a let's filter it eliminate the noise for now that's a zero to roughly five volt square wave zero to five volt square wave can I see that control so let's say that car was misfiring I don't have a scope and maybe we swapped coils and it stays with the same cylinder could we check to see here's the question can we check that blue signal, which is the computer's control of that coil with my test lights? I'm saying with my incandescent one, this one, no, this is gonna pull it to ground is my guess. And that car is gonna start misfiring. But with my LED one, I think I might be able to see that signal. And I wanna do this while we're watching that square wave. Cool? So we'll, we can actually look at both. Let me scale this down a little bit. Love this scope, and I can scale this one up. By the way, this is the best scope that I have ever used, ever. There's so much, there's so much that I can do with this, with this scope that I cannot do with my Varus. Um, but I, I will say, for in Snap One's defense, 95% of the time, 90% of the time, the Varus scope uh, or the Snap One scopes. Are fine and you'll see most of my videos most of my case studies that's what I'm using but when I'm teaching and I want detail and we're doing stuff like this or if I'm doing in cylinder pressure analysis which I'd love to teach you guys a little bit about this week uh, where we can see valve timing and valve events on a scope in the cylinder that's pretty cool we'll see we'll see what happens but I'm picking my Pico to do that all right first one this will be the uh, incandescent let's see what let's see what this does with the incandescent I'm gonna go to ground with this And then the blue trace, it already has uh, a pin. I, I think, I don't think I'm gonna hurt this computer. Um, remember the computer's, the computer's what's controlling this square wave. And I'm actually loading the computer with more current than it would normally see. You guys understand why I'm happy using a demo car doing this? Um, but my, my bulb for my light, I, I don't think I'm gonna hurt it, but um, I don't know, let's see what happens. I'm just going to connect this to my pin. I hear a misfire. Do you guys hear it? Notice the transistor. I've, I've essentially, I've stolen all the voltage away for the base of that transistor. And you see my amperage went away too, didn't it? And is my test light lit or blinking? It's not. You guys should be able to see it on that screen up there. Is the test light in that screen? It's not blinking at all. Okay. As soon as I pulled it away, what happened? Square waves back, amplitude's good, waveform's good. LED light. Questions on what I just showed you. Why, why did that happen? 
I did. Remember, the resistance of this red bulb test light is one that it's too low a resistance. When I connect that up, it's going to steal that. So can I use this light to check for computer's control of this ignition coil is the question I have for you guys. Let's say that coil is not firing. Can I use this light to check that blue square wave? No, I cannot. I'll do it one more time while Cap's here. We'll connect this light. You should be able to see it in that other image over there, Cap. That test light is not blinking. My bulb is stealing that voltage from this circuit. Okay? All right. LED light. Same thing, going to battery ground. Let's make sure my light works. Yes. If I turn that light off, you'll see it probably. See it blinking. Look, did you see that we stole a little bit of the voltage from this? You guys see where the, um, the cursor is? That's where the height of that square wave was. Can you guys see where now we've kind of taken it down a little bit? But can I see coil control with that LED light? Okay, so now I've just made everyone a fan of an LED test light, right? It's like the only time you'll ever hear me talk good about an LED test light. Otherwise, leave it in your toolbox. It's a piece of crap for diagnostic work. It really is. You don't want to be using LED test lights when it comes to troubleshooting. But when it comes to low voltage computer activated circuits, are there times where that LED test light can be my friend? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at it, aren't we? That, let's say that coil is not firing and one of the tests, you, we can check our power, we can check our ground, and we can check our control. Let's try it. Outside of the scope here for a second. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I don't like to do unplugged testing ever. But I'm going to do it for this. Can you guys see what I'm doing? So the power feeds this guy. Is it lit? Why is that not a good test? Because this LED test light only draws about 12 milliamps. How much amperage does the coil draw? We saw over 12 amps of current. So am I loading this circuit the way it should be? So it's not really a great test. Um, the second one over is ground. So if I connect to that one, it's not lit, but I can switch my polarity, right? Switch this over to battery positive. Showing me a ground. And then what about the computer's control? Shows a constant ground on that. That's not good. Let's switch our polarity and see what it shows us. Can you see the blinking? Real tough to see. Is it blinking? All right, pretty cool. You guys, most of you have LED test lights, right? Oh, is this still a group that had tools cap? Their own tools? Okay, go ahead. So at this point in the video, guys, we had an instructor come in the room and inform the class that there was a box truck sitting in the shop that needs to be looked at with a misfire. And he didn't want to be on camera. And so Caleb and I decided to supplement uh, the conversation we had in the classroom with this little segment right here. And so this is what we know going into this case study. Um, it is a newer box truck, uh, GM six liter engine. I think it's around a 2016 model year. You guys will find out here shortly uh, because we're gonna do this case study together. But here's what we know. Uh, the instructor came in and said the box van had a number one cylinder constant misfire and they suspected a faulty ignition coil and they chose an old school method uh, where they connected a inductive pickup on the spark plug wire and then looked for the flashes of the light and what they found out was that um, my cat is in the shot here uh, caleb i need a little assistance here 
because like he's not really helping us <laughs> or she <laughs> uh, i don't even know what i said we're sorry uh, you might have to include a piece of that i don't know um, so they used, again, an old school timing light method. Uh, by the way, this is a coil near plug system. So coil one plug, the coil sits right over top of the spark plug wire with a boot. This one has a coil that sits just over top of that cylinder. And then there's a spark plug wire that runs down to the spark plug. So there, there is a plug wire for each cylinder. They connected a timing light to the number one and said it would flash twice and then not flash anymore. And then, uh, so again, suspecting faulty coil, no spark. Uh, they did not do a conventional spark test like you guys have seen me do a million times with a test light. Um, and they did the same test with the timing light on the next cylinder over, and it worked perfectly, flashed the whole time. And so the timing light test uh, was valid in that it was not working on the number three cylinder, the next cylinder in line, uh, and it was, uh, did I say that right? It was working on the number three cylinder, but was not working on the number one. And so before they replaced the coil, um, this instructor handed it off to another instructor who did, who's doing the scope and scan tool stuff, and they did a scope test on that coil and said that it had a good control square wave. Um, just like we were just looking at for our demo vehicle, this coil on plug design, the transistor is in the coil and they said that the square wave was fine. And so um, that was where they put a new ignition coil in the van and it didn't fix it. And so um, from, from that point, we're gonna pick this right back up to my conversation with the class and what our variables are. Um, I uh, mentioned a few other aspects um, that they needed to check that they did not. And, and that's kind of where this picks back up. So enjoy. And um, by the way, this case study uh, really um, kind of expands uh, into some other topics coming up. I don't want to spoil it. So watch it. This will be in succession where we release these. You guys are going to enjoy this case study. Good. You want to add to that well, before well, I pick yeah. it up? Because I want to capture this well, and I know... We call, it, we call it coil on now. Okay. And we have the same problem. That's why I was and it's a, it. it's a single coil design distributor engine. It's a coil and plug. Oh, it's a GM then? Yeah. Four pin. Pretty sure it's a four pin. Okay. So fourth wire is what? We said test question. What's the fourth wire on a four wire coil on plug? Ground for what? The secondary winding. Remember, have that in there. Ground for secondary winding or some type of confirmation signal, right? But one of those other wires, you guys should have seen this square wave that you're looking at right here on that coil should be what you, you were seeing. You, did you guys see that? You saw the square wave pattern. So then the next thing would be um, is how high was the amplitude of it? You saw when I shorted that out, like here, I'll show you again. I mean, I have a square wave here too. You guys understand that? Yeah. And, what I, and what I can do with this square wave, if I look at that initially and I say, well, I don't like that, well, I can make it look better by just simply adjusting my scales. And, and, and then, you know, seeing like this small square wave and you're like, well, I, I have a square wave, it's there. What was the height of it? It's really important, really important. Make sense? Yeah. That might be where we went wrong. That's one place where we may have gone wrong. And you see the height of that with my test light in there because I'm stealing all that away. I mean, that's only 228 millivolts. That's not enough, right? This should be a 0405 volt square wave, okay? To save all that raw fuel from being dumped in the exhaust. So that's one. Here's the other thing you need to do with that when we go back to that. We need to rescope that for cap again. So you, we put a coil on it that it didn't need, right? One of the things we could have done, swap the coils, right? Moved one from another and then just to see, it was working over there, it's not working over there, could that have saved us from replacing the coil? But swapping coils would have been a good idea too, right? All right, what else could give us what we have? If we have good base control, which is what we're looking at here, 
could we have a voltage drop problem on the feed or on the ground? And the answer is yes. When do you want to look at the power feed and ground? With just the key on? with the connector unplugged, or with it plugged in and the car running so the circuit's loaded. That's what we need to do too. Is that set up? Can we, can we? I, we need to go look at that right now. Is that cool? I mean, it applies to exactly what we're talking about. You can gather around over on this side so you can see my laptop screen. I wanna, I wanna do one other thing. Um, what, what, what my hopes is because of where that coil lives um, and getting the jaws of this amp clamp around it um, is not going to be easy because I have to be around one single wire and so um, I'm going to look at a wiring diagram and see if there's a fuse that feeds all the coils. If there is, I can pop the fuse, put a jumper in there and put my amp clamp there and see all the coils firing from the fuse box. That's, that's my hope. That's what I'm looking for. This is a Chevy, right? Or GM? GMC. I have a wire there. Diagram. Yeah, please. Yeah, grab it. We'll see who gets it first. Is this a 30, 3500? I don't know. I don't know the model of this. It's a G. It's a G engine. It was the eighth one. We'll call it a base. This is a cabin chassis, rear wheel drive. I think I'm going to beat him to the chase with the diagram. So engine performance is what I want. Six liter Vin G is us. There he is. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's all thing. Where's my coils at? Right here. Yeah. So they're all sharing. <laughs> Brown. I'll show you in a second here, Caleb. Uh, injectors are in there too. That's on page two. So I'll show you guys that here. Wait, I'm showing seven. Why do we have 11 here? What year did you look up for this? 2016. Yeah, me too. I got Vin G engine before I only have seven. How weird is that? It's a different diagram. I don't want to make this too complicated, but well, we can go with this. You sure you looked up 16, 2016? Yeah. All right, under hood engine fuse box. I'm gonna go grab a jumper. See if you guys can find find me this fuse. It's ODD. It's a 20 amp. It says ignition inject injector. It's in the under hood fuse box. I gotta go grab my jumper wire. There it is. This guy right here. Ignition injector 70 79. Hey, you guys in the back. I'm putting a loop in where the fuse goes. This allows me to put the jaws of my amp clamp right at the fuse box. And I should be, I'll be able to read all the coils and all the injectors. Unfortunately, the injectors are in here too, which kind of sucks, but. All right, so this tool, take the, hey guys in the back, take the fuse out, put the fuse in the, in the tool, <laughs> maybe, like so, then put it back in. All right, so before I do anything else, I'm gonna look at my lab scope and start it. What are we doing wrong so far? Looking at that way, looking at that waveform. No, you need to flip the amp clamp. Flip the amp clamp first, yep. Just taking that off there and flipping that bad boy over. Cool. Okay. The other thing, I'm only seeing four cylinders on here. So that means there's two separate fuses bank to bank. I have to make sure I'm on the correct bank. What the smaller ramps are in there are the fuel injector fires. Can you see them? Yeah. Can you see them right? See the little tiny guys? Those are the fuel injectors. And then the big ones are the coil events. And, and to see that kind of spacing is pretty normal for a four cylinder engine bank to bank. Um, I need to see that diagram again. I thought it was a fuse for all of them. It's not, it's a fuse for half of them. So this one, Pink wire, pink wire, pink wire, pink wire. There is another one, damn it. It says E, oh, I said, remember I said um, O, O, D, D? That'd be odd and even. <laughs> odd cylinders, even cylinders. So I'm on the right one. I'm on, I'm on the right one, right? Is that cylinder one caps on this side, yes? 
Okay, so that's cool. I'm on the right one, and that's showing me that I have coil control. I have amperage. That's that's a new coil. We have no spark. I mean, look at the pattern. Here, wait. Let's sync it. Let's make sure. Uh, I'm missing my pin. Um, we can now take the coil control signal that I taught you guys about this morning. We could take that square wave pattern and sync it with that, and I'll know which one's which for that coil. I just need to get my pin. If I have a corrosion on the power feed, won't that make my coil current ramp smaller? Yeah. If I have corrosion on the ground, won't that make the ramp smaller? Yeah. All four of those ramps are even. Let me set a trigger to uh, stabilize this and we'll set it on channel B. And then let's go down. Yeah, I mean, those are all pretty even looking patterns to me. You see the repetition in it. Yeah, this, it picks up an RPM like I did hear that. Yeah. I did hear that. Caleb, jump inside here. All I'm doing, guys, is the same thing I showed you in the room. I'm just going down the connector and I'm gonna look for my small square wave. I know it's gonna be there because I have a ramp. I mean, unless I pulled here's here's the variable. On on the wiring diagram it shows odd and even. On the power distribution box, I just went after one that I saw ignition and injector, and I might be looking at bank two. We're about to find out. The square wave's gonna tell me if I'm on the wrong bank. 79 is where I was. Yeah, I understand that, but yes. on that, what showed you odd, uh, tell you fuse position on that? Should've. It, it didn't say the number, but it's at the top. It's like up in here, up in here it says like all, Odd. Oh, this says yeah, even odd, bank 79. 79's the even, even bank? bank? I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong side. Right church, wrong Hold on, hold on. I, I want to show yeah, you guys yeah. how we're going to know we're on the wrong side here in a second. We're on the wrong side. That's great. Okay, wire colors, wire colors. One of the middle two. I need my Phil's electric probe. Yep. Okay, so it's the second one in. Now I got to do it up on the front one. Wait, let's. That's a known good one. So what's my voltage? Same as the one in the room, huh? Four point eight volts. Tell me. Ask them out there if I got anything on that. Is there anything on that? There is. Is there a square wave? That right there that we're looking at tells us we're on the wrong bank. Because what should the square wave match up to? One of the ramps, right? You see how it's not. So that tells me alone, I know we realized before we got there, we're on the wrong bank. How's my computer control of that coil though? It's there, it's good, and it's just like one of the other ones. You guys did good by the way, so props okay. to you guys. Sweet. On your test that you did, you did good on that part. You have computer control. This does not need an engine computer for no control on that coil, but I need to go to the other fuse. Is it right next to it? Yeah, it's that other one. Literally right next to it. Yep. <laughs> in that trumpet. Let's see that. <laughs> put the other one back into it. Uh, I'm just swapping, yeah. I'm just, and I'm just gonna move the, leave the fuse in my jumper. Okay, we're good now. We'll have to do the same fuse. Yeah, yep. Uh -huh. Fire in a hole. All right, remember what that looked like to begin with. That's, I have it frozen. Burn that image in your mind. What are we seeing? Zero to about nine amps of current, and you see the gaps. One, a space, so what we're gonna see is opposite. You'll see two in here, one in here, one in here, two, and it'll, it'll be exactly opposite on the other bank, so watch. What? Run. Oh. Why is it frozen? My scope just got stupid on me. Oh, I, uh... I have a trigger set. Let me shut this trigger off. When you acquire a new signal on a scope, you want no trigger at all. I'm upside down. That's what happened, right? Lesson learned there. I teach this to my, my guys is when acquiring a new signal, you should never have a trigger set. Never. Nope. You saw why. I'm like, why is my pattern frozen? Because I'm upside down. I got to switch this over. Good now? Yeah. You guys see the amperage level on that one is higher? 
So what I want to do is I want to trigger off of the blue channel and that's going to allow me to pull that out. Um, we still have a filter set. We're going to have noise here too. So yeah, trigger is not going to be good for us because of the noise. But I can freeze that picture. Let's take filter off of this too, because I, I really want some detail here. And um, the nice thing about the Pico is we can get detail and zoom in. So we'll pause that picture. Blue Trace is the coil that we're worried about, right? I'm just taking your guys' word on it though that that's our misfiring cylinder. I'm, I'm gonna take your word on that. And uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, everything is there for this to be produced in spark. Could we have a power or ground problem on this coil? Um, let, me, let me put the filter back to help your eyes here with this. The red trace, you notice that it's higher than the rest. That's not a problem to me. It's a new coil, it's a different coil. It's an aftermarket coil. Having higher amperage does not bother me at all. But just like the rest of these, I mean, that should be that should be producing spark. How did we test it? Who confirmed we don't have spark? You did. I trust you. Timing light only. Timing light only. Convince me that wouldn't work. Oh, I can't, Cap. But I went to a known good cylinder and I had constant stroke. I I'm seeing four uh, injector firings too in here. You guys see it? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So my injectors are firing too, my coils are firing. I, I gotta I gotta be worried about the spark plug on that. Could a shorted grounded spark plug affect the KV low enough to make your timing light not fire? How much KV do we need to trigger a timing light? Little. But here's the deal. New plug and we cleaned it with sandblaster no cracks i'm gonna no i'm gonna grab my incandescent do a quick spark check caleb inside the van can you reach up and crank that for me caleb <laughs> Okay, shut it off. Can you guys see how far that jumped out? We have good spark. That electrode is way inside, up here. How far is that spark jumping? Out to here, at least an inch. There's nothing wrong with that coil. Let's compare the one next to it, huh? Crank it. Yep. Same distance. Stops about right there, about a quarter of an inch away. All right, shut it off. Um, Cap and I can talk about where we went wrong somewhere down the line. You guys understand that what we looked at right here is telling us computer control is good, our amperage looks good. So if our amperage is higher than the other ones, can't be a power ground problem, can it? It's cause lower than normal amperage. So I'm not even worried about moving my probe to the power of the ground or the confirmation signal. I don't care. Is the coil being controlled? We proved it. We could see it on the scope, proved it out here. The gap, the electrodes about an inch inside. So that thing's jumping a good inch on both that coil and the one next to it. The coil's fine. Why this thing's misfiring, don't know yet, but it's not a bad coil. Make sense? I don't know if it ever needed a coil. My guess is it probably didn't, but I don't know the spark test that we did. Cap used a timing light and- uh, Nothing. Yeah. One or two blinks that go dead. Yeah. We'll blame Cap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On camera. <laughs> you can say it, say it. I'll bleep it. You can say F you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll talk about this tomorrow. This will be fun, but thank you guys for a good day. Thank you. I'll see you in the morning. Mr. Kaplan doesn't like to be on camera, so we can't talk about this anymore. It'd be really great too, but uh, he used a timing light. Uh, and I honestly, I was thinking I'd like to see that test, but 
At the same time, my spark test tells me I don't even care what the timing light showed us. And I really am worried about the plug. Um, I'm also worried about um, compression um, that we could have. I need to do a clear flood crank real quick just to satisfy my own curiosity. I wanna hear the cadence in which this cranks. It's, do you hear that skip though? I know, but did you hear the, it, did you hear the inconsistencies in that? Like at times that was not, that was not right. Listen to this. Hold on, I'll show it to you. Stay here, Caleb. Hey. I'm just doing a quick relative compression test. Negative, I'll use the negative. Okay, just give me one second, Jake. Jake, what do you think the problem is? Probably like the, the, cam, the cam sensor. <laughs> Trying to guess. Just off the top of your head. <laughs> we'll go. Not 10 right. second screen. All right, clear flood crank. Come on, what are you doing? I went the wrong way and I have a trigger set like a, no I don't, okay. I think we have a, we have a mechanical problem with this engine. Not, not what you wanted to hear if this is yours. It's there, man. Absolutely. This, this is absolutely a mechanical problem. It means we have a valve issue, most likely. And I'm gonna save this for everyone else, too, to see it for tomorrow. Because we, we scoped, uh, we bore scoped that. Yeah, we're gonna be doing it again. What do you got? Compression problem. Huh? Compression problem. No way to hell. Yep. Why'd I get 150 pound of pressure? Because it's intermittent. But look at it. So we got a valve stick. Yes, we do. Come here, look at it. It's yeah, clear yeah. as day, man. Where are you looking at? It's just right over here, Kyle. Yeah. Just, just look at the, the, the cadence that we were hearing. Yeah. You see the that low one in there, um, and it's it's every so often. Um, yeah, it's like bam, bam. Yeah. Let's bam, see if that bam. hit that one twice. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Same cylinder there and there. And then it took a while before it did it again. So uh, we can sync that with an ignition event, but that is, that is a, a mechanical problem. So that's either a valve sticking or a lifter issue. Yes, sir. And we well, should, we should be- We need to know is, I, I can't imagine- In cylinder, man. I said I wanted to do in cylinder stuff with this group this week. We're doing some in cylinder pressure analysis coming up. So tomorrow we'll pick this up with the students. We're gonna shut this camera off because I know Cap doesn't like to be on camera and we're gonna talk about this off camera and then I'll fill you guys in on what we talked about. We'll pick this back up with the class tomorrow. <clears throat> See you guys tomorrow.